give us some analysis. Dr. Afshin Shahi, an associate professor in Middle East politics at the University of Kiel. Uh, that's in Staffordshire in uh, central uh, England. Uh, Dr. Shahi, thank you very much for being with us. I know there's, there's much to discuss and much to say uh, on this matter. And of course, we know the death toll now is over 12,000. And sadly, that is set to rise. Uh, may I start by asking you about the issue of getting aid through to people, the readiness for this kind of situation. We know that that region, uh, Turkey, northwest Syria, sits on tectonic plates that move. Uh, movement is often logged. Should the authorities have been better prepared? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, certainly when you uh, look at the situation in the Turkey, you would expect a country that has experienced a very rapid uh, rate of uh, economic development, at least over the last 20 years, uh, would be uh, slightly more prepared. Uh, for earthquake. I mean, given the, the fact that if, if you do look at history of uh, Turkey uh, over the last few hundred years, you know, earthquake isn't anything uh, kind of uncommon uh, in, the, in that country. But if you don't mind, let me kind of shift my focus a little bit uh, to, to Syria, because at least despite the shortcomings in Turkey, there is an international coordinated plan to do something in that region and to rescue people. But when you cross the border, you see completely uh, a different uh, reality. Of course, an earthquake of this magnitude within any uh, urban uh, the, the kind of environment would be absolutely uh, disastrous. But you only have to imagine you're dealing with a region, you're dealing with a country that has gone through one of the worst civil wars in the, in the living uh, memory. The existing infrastructure is effectively battered beyond uh, recognition, even uh, before the earthquake. It, this is specific earthquake in cities like Aleppo because of the war and numbers of uh, uh, kind of other problems like siege and bombardment uh, from the Syrian regime uh, and from the Russian planes. Most of the buildings were extremely unstable. For example, in January, uh, a building, because of basically the legacies of the war, simply just collapsed. And as a result of that, uh, 13 people uh, died. Literally, there is a kind of shortage of energy in this specifically. Uh, the kind of cold and brutal uh, the environment. There are gas shortages, there are fuel shortages, there were few uh, kind of functioning roads uh, in, the, in this region, uh, and these roads obviously uh, no longer walk, no, no longer uh, kind of uh, functional. Uh, so the situation is very problematic, particularly uh, in the, the kind of Edlib, uh, Edlib region. Uh, I need to remind your viewers that Edlib is one of the few uh, kind of remaining areas which is still not under the control of of uh, uh, the, Assad, uh, the Assad regime. So obviously, uh, it makes the situation millions of times more, uh, more complicated when it comes to any kind of international effort for uh, rescue, when it comes to any kind of international effort uh, for uh, humanitarian aid, automatically makes the situation very, very, very challenging for any kind of uh, a rescue effort. Idlib, just to remind people watching, uh, Dr. Shahi, it's the place where that young boy was pulled uh, out of the wreckage of his own home by men wearing white helmets. They are the Syrian white helmets, the Syrian defence uh, group, as they call themselves. Um, and what you've been describing uh, really is this double tragedy, if you like, a sort of parallel tragedy going on because we've had the earthquake strike there and we also have the ongoing conflict with the Assad regime and as you say, that part of Syria, which is not under his control. Yeah, absolutely. And right now, you know, what makes me particularly worried that the Syrian regime might use this kind of disastrous situation uh, might use basically the suffering that we see uh, in Idlib as an opportunity uh, to kind of reposition themselves militaristically uh, in, the, in, the, in that region. So despite the fact that actually a lot of people are very worried about basically the outcome of these earthquakes and the many aftershakes that they may experience uh, in, the, in, the, in the near future, they also have to be worried about basically the new tactics and the new maneuverings uh, of, uh, of uh, the Syrian uh, regime. And at the same time, uh, the Syrian regime has been kind of heavily campaigning uh, over the last uh, few days to push the international uh, opportunity 
to cancel uh, the sanctions. But obviously, uh, canceling the sanctions against uh, the murderous regime of Bashar Assad uh, is not basically a good uh, solution. This regime is responsible for extreme violations of uh, human rights over the last uh, 13 years as the result uh, of the civil war. Uh, I mean, we don't know the exact numbers, but certainly over half a million people uh, were killed and millions of people uh, have been have been displaced. Are so saying, we shouldn't actually provide any opportunity. Sir, are you saying that if, as certain supporters of Assad are calling for, if those sanctions are relaxed, that wouldn't change a thing? Assad would just benefit from those sanctions being relaxed and continue to attack in northwestern Syria? Absolutely. I mean, the, the way I look at it is that the Syrian regime is looking at this disastrous situation as blessing in, the, in disguise. As I said, they may use this opportunity to militaristically reposition themselves in that region, and that can pave the way to a lot of other kind of suffering uh, and bloodshed. And at the same time, they may be able to get some unnecessary concession, because I certainly believe that cancellation of any of these uh, kind of European uh, sanctions is not going to have any meaningful impact on the situation uh, on the ground. It's only going to uh, empower uh, kind of the Syrian regime. But I suppose the ultimate question is here, how can we provide some humanitarian aid to the people who are affected in this region? There are millions of refugees uh, in, the, in this region. Effectively, we are talking about one of the most impoverished areas uh, in, the, in the world. Uh, the majority of people uh, living in these kind of unfit uh, kind of refugee camps, they're not even sure when their next meal uh, is going to uh, come from. About 91% uh, of the population directly depends upon uh, kind of uh, international uh, international aid. So the, what I suggest is that there has to be a third way. I certainly don't think that cancellation of the, can the, 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 the sanctions is going to be good and certainly it's going to be unfair to millions of Syrians who have been fighting uh, the Syrian regime over the last uh, 13, uh, 13 years. But at the same time, at the same time, the international community has to do more in order to make sure that basically humanitarian aid is reaching these people through the only border crossing that is now available uh, through, through Turkey. There is way, providing that there is basically a political will uh, by the international community and certainly by the international organizations. Dr. Afshin Shahi, thank you for that very clear and cogent analysis of the situation. We appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much.